Beyond the walls of Hogwarts, the wizarding world is torn apart by war. The once great kingdoms have fallen, and the magical creatures that once roamed freely have been hunted to near extinction. The only hope for the future lies with those who have the strength and the cunning to master the dark magic of the void and to bring order to a world that has been plunged into chaos. Welcome to this grim dark version of Hogwarts, where the power of magic is both a blessing and a curse, and where the future of the wizarding world hangs in the balance. Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave the AI Wizard, and today, after playing quite a lot of Hogwarts Legacy recently, I was thinking about how much fun it would be to run a D&D campaign in something like the Harry Potter setting. Obviously there is the official campaign sourcebook Strixhaven, which is somewhat Potter-inspired, I believe, but I'm not very interested in that. And besides, I'm more interested in building my own world, or in this case, an alternate version of the Hogwarts world, but grimdark. Although I'll be doing this ostensibly for a D&D campaign, it is, in truth, just an excuse to do some world building with ChatGPT. Obviously this isn't something you could do commercially, at least not without being very careful to avoid recognisable details, and even doing this for your own private D&D game might technically be infringement. I don't know, I'm not an IP lawyer, but for this video I'm going to be relying mostly on Rowling and WB's tolerance of fan fiction for any IP, copyright or trademark transgressions contained herein. First things first, we need to check that ChatGPT understands the concepts that we're going to be working with. ChatGPT in dark mode here, uh, as requested by Goran. Hopefully you like this dark mode better. Also, you'll note I now have ChatGPT Plus because ChatGPT Plus, the subscription model, is now available in the UK. It's 20 bucks a month, and uh, hopefully it should mean that I no longer get interrupted when recording these videos. So, first things first, let's just establish our terms. Please give a very brief description of your understanding of the term grimdark. Grimdark is a subgenre of fantasy and science fiction that is characterized by a dark and gritty atmosphere, often with a focus on violence, power struggles, and morally ambiguous characters. It often explores themes of war, political intrigue, and personal struggles in a world that is often depicted as bleak and oppressive. The term Grimdark is a play on the words grim and dark, and often used to describe works that are both dark and humorous in tone. For example, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Okay, I added that example myself, but you can't really reference Grimdark without the work that originated it. That being, of course, 40k. Good. Now, please give a very brief description of the world of Harry Potter, specifically Hogwarts and its surrounding area. The world of Harry Potter is a magical universe where witchcraft and wizardry exist. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry is the main setting of the series and is located in Scotland. It is a vast and sprawling castle that serves as a school for young witches and wizards, where they can learn magic and hone their skills. The surrounding area is a magical forest filled with dangerous creatures and hidden paths. Beyond the castle and forest lies the Wizarding World, which is divided into several countries including England, Scotland, and Ireland. The wizarding world is full of magical creatures, spells, potions, and traditions, and is kept hidden from the non-magical world or muggle world. Uh, great! Now we need to somehow combine these and create a new world, a new setting, with enough detail to allow us to run a D&D &D game or indeed use for any other purpose that we may have in mind. Except, of course, publishing this in such a way as to violate anyone's IP. And Anyone who's engaged in world building in the past will know just how daunting of a task it is to sit down with essentially a blank sheet of paper and start trying to build an entire world. It's an enormous undertaking and one which most people either don't have the time, the skill or the inclination to actually tackle. And this is one of the great uses of ChatGPT is it can 
drastically reduce that load and it can also provide a sounding board to bounce ideas off of it can provide a tutor to actually help to teach you the skills that you need in order to build that world and of course it can provide a creative consultant to actually fill in a lot of that detail for you and generate interesting descriptions to spark your imagination and that's how we're going to begin i have crafted this prompt let's do some world building we're going to combine the Hogwarts setting with the grimdark style. This world will be used for a homebrew D&D campaign. Using your knowledge of Hogwarts and Harry Potter, write an evocative and engaging introduction to an alternate grimdark version of Hogwarts. Draw inspiration from Warhammer 40,000's themes and language, but avoid specific Warhammer details. I want this to be focused on Harry Potter. Apply them to the iconic locations, time period, factions and ideas of Harry Potter's Hogwarts and the wider wizarding world. Let's see how it does. In this alternate grimdark version of the wizarding world, the magic has grown corrupt and the once great Hogwarts school of witchcraft and wizardry has become a shadow of its former self. The castle, now a towering fortress, surrounded by a dark and twisted forest that is home to fearsome beasts and malevolent spirits. The once grand halls are now filled with the whispers of dark magic, and the once noble professors have become power-hungry tyrants who will stop at nothing to maintain their hold over their students. The students themselves are a mix of the desperate, the ambitious, and the doomed. Many come to Hogwarts in search of power and knowledge, only to find themselves caught up in the machinations of rival factions who seek to control the future of the wizarding world. The students are trained in the dark arts, learning to harness the power of the void and to bend the elements to their will. But with this power comes great danger as the students must also learn to defend themselves against the forces of darkness that threaten to consume them. Beyond the walls of Hogwarts, the wizarding world is torn apart by war. The once great kingdoms have fallen, and the magical creatures that once roamed freely have been hunted to near extinction. The only hope for the future lies with those who have the strength and the cunning to master the dark magic of the void and to bring order to a world that has been plunged into chaos. Welcome to this grim dark version of Hogwarts where the power of magic is both a blessing and a curse and where the future of the wizarding world hangs in the balance. Wow! That's actually really good. That was a lot better than I was expecting for an initial response to just a single prompt. Basically, I mean, this is already incredibly evocative, right? This gives us all of the details we need to, to start to imagine this corrupted version of the wizarding world in which, well, war has torn it asunder for starters and Hogwarts has become this kind of dark bastion of evil magic and students and professors who are basically just out to accumulate as much power and wealth as they can for themselves. Awesome. Uh, great. Let's see. What do we need to do next then? Let's start by fleshing out Hogwarts itself some. So great. Write a list of the factions within Hogwarts. Include a brief description of their goals, their activities and their leader. In this grimdark version of Hogwarts, the following factions have emerged. The Dark Council. This is the ruling faction in the school, consisting of the professors and the most powerful students. They are focused on maintaining their power and control over the wizarding world, using any means necessary. Their activities include manipulating student politics, conducting secret experiments, and training students in the darkest forms of magic. Their leader is the headmaster, a mysterious figure who commands great power and respect. 2. The Order of the Void. This faction is made up of students who have dedicated themselves to mastering the dark magic of the Void. They believe that only by embracing the power of the Void can they hope to survive in a world that is being consumed by darkness. 
Their activities include practicing forbidden magic, exploring the dark forests surrounding the school, and seeking out ancient artifacts of power. Their leader is the Void Caller, a charismatic student who has mastered the art of calling forth the power of the Void. 3. The Wardens This faction is made up of students who have pledged to protect the Wizarding World from the forces of darkness. They believe that the only way to ensure the survival of the Wizarding World is to maintain a strict code of ethics and to limit the use of dark magic. Their activities include patrolling the forests surrounding the schools, investigating reports of dark magic, and training in defensive magic. Their leader is the Warden Captain, a brave student who has earned the respect of his peers through his combat skills and unwavering commitment to justice. And then, finally, the Outcasts. This faction is made up of students who have been rejected by the other factions and have banded together for protection. They are a diverse group, consisting of misfits, rebels, and those who have fallen foul of the Dark Council. Their goals are simply to survive and to protect one another in a hostile environment. Their activities include exploring the forbidden parts of the castle, trading in forbidden knowledge, and seeking out allies in their struggle against the Dark Council. Their leader is the Outcast King, a cunning student who has earned the loyalty of his followers through his cunning and his ability to get things done. Okay, this is pretty good. Um, what we need really is to understand the power dynamics and really the structure of, of Hogwarts. Are the students trapped in Hogwarts? How do they come to be there? And what purpose does the school serve in the wider wizarding world? In this grimdark version of Hogwarts, students are not necessarily trapped in the school, but attendance is mandatory for young witches and wizards. The purpose of the school is to train the next generation of wizards in the use of magic and to prepare them for the challenges they will face in the wider wizarding world. It serves as a hub of magical learning and as a focal point for the power struggles that are taking place in the wizarding world. Students come to Hogwarts from all over the wizarding world, either by choice or by obligation. Some are born into magical families and are sent to the school to receive proper education in the ways of magic. Others come from less fortunate backgrounds and are given a chance to learn magic and to escape their difficult lives. Regardless of their motivations, once they arrive at Hogwarts, they are expected to participate in the power struggles that are taking place within the school and in the wider wizarding world. In this grimdark version of the wizarding world, the school serves as a key player in the ongoing conflict between the different factions. The students who attend the school are seen as the future of the wizarding world, and as such, they are being groomed to take on leadership roles and to shape the future of the wizarding world in their own image. Whether they will rise to the challenge remains to be seen, but the fate of the wizarding world rests in their hands. This is good, but it isn't quite dark enough. How about all witches and wizards are forced to attend the school as a means of weeding out the weak from the strong? The weak never make it to graduation. Yes, that's a much darker take on the Hogwarts setting. In this alternate grimdark version of the Wizarding World, all young witches and wizards are forcibly conscripted into attending Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The school serves as a brutal proving ground, where only the strongest and most capable students will survive to graduation. The weak are culled, either through the rigours of their training or through the machinations of the more powerful students and the professors. The school is seen as a necessary evil by the wizarding world, as a means of ensuring that only the strongest and most capable wizards are allowed to wield magic. The students who attend the school are seen as the future of the wizarding world and as such they are subjected to gruelling training, dangerous trials and life-threatening challenges. Those who survive are seen as the elite of the wizarding world and they are given the power and the knowledge to shape the future of the wizarding world as they see fit. For the students who attend Hogwarts, life is a constant struggle for survival. They are forced to navigate the treacherous waters of student politics, to master the dark magic of the void, and to face the many dangers that lurk in the dark forests and the twisting hallways of the castle. But for those who are strong enough to survive, the rewards are great. 
as they are given the power to shape the future of the Wizarding World and to claim their place among the elite of the Wizarding World. You're overusing, you're overusing the term Wizarding World. My apologies, I'll try to use more varied terminology. For the students who attend Hogwarts, life is a constant battle for survival. They must navigate the treacherous waters of student politics, master the dark magic of the void, and face the many dangers that lurk in the surrounding dark forests and the castle's labyrinthine halls. But for those who are strong enough to endure, the rewards are substantial, as they are given the power to shape the future of the magical world and secure their place among its elite. Much better, actually, a much better final paragraph. Obviously, I could just ask ChatGPT what the world is at war over and what the consequences of all of that are, but the point of using ChatGPT isn't to have it just do everything for you. It should be a collaboration. We should have to and fro, suggesting things to it, suggesting our own ideas, incorporating them and riffing off of them. So, my next prompt, you mentioned the world is at war. This should be a war between Wizarding Kind and Muggles. Wizarding Kind is winning and exerts control over the world by force. Describe this dynamic for me. In this alternate, grim dark version of the Wizarding World, the conflict between the Wizarding community and the non-magical community, known as Muggles, has escalated into a full-scale war. The Wizarding community, with their mastery of magic, holds the upper hand and has gained control over much of the world through force. The Muggles, who are powerless against the might of magic, are oppressed and forced to live in fear of the wizards who rule over them. The wizarding world is now a society dominated by the strong, where might makes right and the weak are crushed underfoot. The ruling wizarding elite who hold sway over the magical community use their power to maintain their grip on the muggles, who are seen as little more than a conquered people. The muggles are subjected to harsh laws and regulations, and those who dare to resist are swiftly punished. Despite this, there are pockets of resistance among the muggles, who fight against their oppressors in the hope of reclaiming their freedom. These rebels are seen as a threat by the ruling wizards, who use their magic to track down and eliminate any sign of dissent. For the students who attend Hogwarts, the war between the wizarding community and the muggles is a distant reality, one that they will eventually be expected to participate in. They are trained in the ways of magic and in the art of war, so that they may one day take their place among the ruling elite and help maintain the wizarding world's hold over the muggles. In this grim, dark version of the wizarding world, the balance of power is firmly in the hands of the wizards, and the future of the muggles rests in their mercy. I like it. The wizarding world needs a reason to oppress the muggles, though. Perhaps fear of AI, which the muggles were developing, might be an interesting theme. Yes, that's an interesting twist on the wizarding world. In this alternate, grimdark version of the magical universe, the wizards have oppressed the muggles out of fear of artificial intelligence, AI, technology. The muggles were on the cusp of developing advanced AI systems that could potentially rival or surpass magic in terms of power and capability. The wizards, who saw the development of AI as a threat to their dominance, acted swiftly to stamp out the muggles' research and to gain control over the muggle population. The wizards now rule over the muggles with an iron fist, using their magic to keep them in check and to prevent any further research into AI. The muggles are forced to live in a state of fear, constantly monitored and controlled by the wizards who rule over them. Any sign of dissent is swiftly dealt with, and any attempt to further research AI is punished severely. For the students who attend Hogwarts, the oppression of the Muggles is simply a fact of life, one that they have grown up accepting as normal. They are trained in the ways of magic and in the art of war, so that they may one day take their place among the ruling wizarding elite and help maintain their hold over the Muggles. In this grim dark version of the wizarding world, the wizards are motivated by fear and a desire for control, and the muggles are forced to live in a world where their technological advancement has been stifled and their freedom has been taken away. The balance of power rests firmly in the hands of the wizards, and the future of the muggles 
rests in their mercy. Um, this is actually turning out to be really quite cool. I like this. I might have to strip out the obvious Harry Potter references and uh, keep the general theme and idea and make it into an actual setting and, and sort of more fully develop it. This is a great start. Can you give me a short list of areas we should work on to flesh out this world some more? Sure, here are a few areas that could be further fleshed out to create a more robust and immersive world. The history of the Wizarding World. Establish the history of the Wizarding World and how the war with the Muggles began. 2. Nature of Magic. Describing the nature of magic, how it is used and regulated, and the consequences of using magic could help to flesh out the world. 3. The factions within the Wizarding World. Expanding on the different factions within the Wizarding World, their goals, and how they interact with one another could add to the complexity and intrigue of the world. The Muggle Resistance. Developing the Muggle Resistance and their motivations for resisting the wizards could create a more nuanced world and provide a source of conflict. The Creatures and Beings of the Wizarding World. Describing the different creatures and beings that inhabit the Wizarding World, their role in the world and their relationship with the wizards and muggles could add to the richness of the world. This is true. The Technology of the Muggles. Exploring the technology of the Muggles and how it differs from the magic of the wizards could add to the tension between the two communities. And finally, the political structure of the Wizarding World. Defining the political structure of the Wizarding World, how decisions are made and who holds power could add to the complexity of the world and provide a backdrop for the power struggles that take place within it. Um, these are all great suggestions and basically all things that really need to be done. We could just start working through them one by one, but I think this video would probably reach an absurd length uh, if we were to do that. But it certainly gives us a decent idea for how we might proceed from this point. And actually some of these are really interesting, specifically around the muggle resistance, the idea of technology, what that might mean, are there AIs already in existence, perhaps, that could be fighting back against the wizard's oppression? Is that an existential threat, as the wizards believe, or is it an overreaction? It's, it's a rich seam to be developed there, and I'm already really excited about it, despite the fact that I really only did this as an interesting exercise. Finally, I think I'm just going to leave that list for the time being. Maybe I'll come back to that. Leave a comment if you want to see this world building series continue and for us to really flesh out the details of this grim dark wizarding world some more but in order to just finish this video with a bit of descriptive flair let's have chat gpt describe hogsmeade in this hogwarts but grim dark reality Please describe Hogsmeade in this version of the Wizarding World. Include rich detail and narrative description of the village, its businesses, the surrounding area, and how the war has affected it. It should be an interesting place to visit and provide a contrast to Hogwarts in some way. Hogsmeade is a small wizarding village located near Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. In this alternate, grimdark version of the Wizarding World, Hogsmeade is a place that provides a stark contrast to the oppressive and dangerous environment of Hogwarts. Despite the ongoing war with the Muggles, Hogsmeade remains a haven for the Wizarding community, a place where they can relax and enjoy the simple pleasures of life. The village is nestled in the heart of a dense forest, surrounded by rolling hills and babbling brooks. The streets are lined with quaint, thatched roof cottages, and the air is filled with the sound of laughter and sweet fragrances of blooming flowers. No, no. It should be different from Hogwarts, but it must still be grimdark. Try again, but let's say Hogsmeade and its ruling family were rewarded for its loyalty and efforts during the war, and the village has grown rich, opulent, and decadent. Let's see, ChatGPT. Something a bit more fitting for our grimdark. Understood. I'll revise my previous answer to better reflect the new direction. Hogsmeade is a small wizarding village located near Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. In this alternate, grimdark version of the wizarding world, Hogsmeade is a place of stark contrast to the oppressive and dangerous environment of Hogwarts. The village is ruled by a powerful wizarding family who were rewarded for their loyalty and efforts during the war with the Muggles. As a result, Hogsmeade has grown into a wealthy and decadent community where the ruling elite live lives of luxury and excess. The streets of Hogsmeade are lined with opulent mansions and elegant shops, each more grandiose than the last. 
The residents of the village flaunt their wealth, showing off their magical abilities and their fine clothing. The centre of the village is dominated by a large square, where the ruling family holds court and where the villagers come to pay homage. The businesses of Hogsmeade cater to the needs of the wizarding elite, offering the finest magical trinkets, potions and gourmet foods. The Three Broomsticks is a popular inn and tavern that serves as the social hub of the village, where the ruling wizards gather to drink, gamble and make deals. The Shrieking Shack, a once mysterious and infamous building, has been transformed into a decadent nightclub where the wizarding elite come to dance and revel late into the night. Despite the opulence of Hogsmeade, the war with the Muggles has left its mark on the village. The surrounding forests are patrolled by the wizards, who keep watch for any signs of Muggle resistance. The villagers themselves are wary of outsiders, and they are quick to report any suspicious activity to the authorities. In this grim, dark version of the Wizarding World, Hogsmeade is a place of stark contrast to the dangers and difficulties of life at Hogwarts. It is a place where the Wizarding elite come to indulge their every whim, to flaunt their wealth and power, and to revel in their success. But despite the opulence and decadence of Hogsmeade, the war with the Muggles continues and the residents of the village live in fear of Muggle retaliation and the threat of a rebellion. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. World building with AI is absolutely amazing. I mean, just the detail, the descriptive flair that you can get out of ChatGPT. And you don't have to use this as is, obviously. We could keep refining this. We could pose suggestions and have it change bits and pieces here. Or we could just take the whole thing out, edit it, completely rewrite it if we wanted to. And that's the beauty of working with ChatGPT for world building. Anybody who's watched my series on writing a Dungeons & Dragons adventure with ChatGPT, this will be very familiar, but here we're really focusing in on some of the wider details of the world, some of the history, and once again, ChatGPT does not fail to deliver. It is able to generate some really good ideas and some really good descriptive content that you can then just take and, and paste into your world. You could get the same result as working with ChatGPT if you hired two or three assistant writers to, to help you to flesh out a world. But most of us couldn't possibly afford to do that. So having ChatGPT there able to provide that service for us, I think that is incredibly exciting. And I cannot wait to see how this technology develops. Assuming, of course, there isn't some mysterious hidden world of wizards waiting to cast us down for daring to unlock such capabilities. I guess we will have to wait and see on that. As always, please remember to do the YouTube things. Uh, like, comment especially. It's how we poke that YouTube dragon and get it to turn its gaze upon this channel. There will definitely be more world building content on this channel. I've got lots and lots of ideas, probably more than I can possibly hope to do. But if you have any suggestions with regard to that, then do let me know. But until those future videos, thanks a lot for watching everyone and I'll see you later.